right, hi guys, it's Regan here with Fishy Business. Um, Chuck's out of town, so I get to do the video again this week. Um, before we get started, we want to introduce you to one of our very good friends here at Fishy Business to tell you a little bit more about some very new, cool technology. All right, so before we take a look at some of the saltwater fish this week, we wanted to give you guys a preview of some of the newest lighting technology. And this light right here is actually the very first one in the U.S. Um, we might be the first store that actually has them in use. Um, so to tell you all about it is Francois. Hi, I'm Francois from Macron Partners. And yes, the first light coming in this week. So we have just four in the U.S. right now and one is sit here this morning and should be on the coral system for the next day. So this is the GNC LED light. So this is the Blu-ray Pro. So it covered something like 40 by 26, 28 um, by maybe 25 height. So we have almost uh, 600 LEDs inside and the uh, power is about 135 watts and we have a power at 25 inches tall for 390. Every kit coming with this Wi-Fi. So you have his own Wi-Fi, so you can connect to your Wi-Fi inside house and network, but the best way is his own Wi-Fi. So if you don't have any networks at all, you can control it. You can just plug it in, take the Wi-Fi, put the password, and you are in. So you can control very easy with every phone, Android, or uh, iOS, because it's on the web. So you have something like an app, very easy, three channel, blue, red, and white. The best part is we don't have any moving parts on it, so it just uh, sit here, very heavy. Some people can say it's very, very heavy. So when you, you get it for the first time, you say, ooh, that's very heavy. But the best part is no noise. You see nothing, just the noise of the tank. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it's not my tank, so it's very cool. <laughs> and yeah, you don't have any lens, uh, just uh, the, the acrylic here, plexi, it's, it's covered and it's IP20, so it's test free. Don't put on the water, it will not waterproof, but it's splash proof, like I said. Okay. So yeah, I'm very excited to come in the shop next, uh, maybe tomorrow you yep. can have it. So, yeah. We're very excited to actually get it on our tanks. Thank you, Thank Francois. You. Uh, whenever you guys come in the store, make sure to take a look for one of the lights on. I don't know what tank we're going to put it on, one of the coral tanks, but take a look for that. Alright guys, let's get on to the fish. Alright guys, this is the Hamlet Indigo Grouper. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. It has a super dark blue indigo color, which is where it gets its name. This guy is a member of the Serranidae family, and they're actually found in places fairly close to us here in Colombia. South Carolina, such as the Florida Keys and in the Gulf of Mexico. These guys only get about five or six inches, which is pretty small for a grouper, which is why this species is fairly popular in the aquarium trade. If they are fed well, they should leave a majority of the cleanup crew and inverts alone, but they're still a grouper, so they might still predate on some small shrimp and crabs. Um, so a fun and unique and some might say useless fact about these guys is that they actually possess both male and female reproductive organs. And these guys have been known to breed in larger aquarium systems. So their overall coloration, size, and temperament do make this guy a very excellent addition to any aquarium. Alright guys, this is the blue spot butterfly. And as you can see, they are mostly all yellow with a blue spot or area on the upper part of their bodies as well as a very distinct eye spot right before their caudal fin. So eye spots are a form or type of camouflage, and the way it works is that it's supposed to trick their predators into thinking that that's its eye. So if a predator thinks that that eye spot on its tail is its eye, it's going to try to sneak around to the back of its body, which is actually their face. So this guy is going to be able to see their predator coming and be able to swim away. These guys, along with all butterflies, are not reef safe as they will gladly eat all of your stony corals. So something super cool about this species is that they will act or behave like a cleaner fish and they will actually feed on parasites of some of the other fish in your aquarium. Alright guys, this is the Starkey or the blue faced tilefish. Um, they're very peaceful and they are very reef compatible as well. 
They get about six to seven inches long. So these guys right here look pretty full grown and they only need a minimum tank size of about 50 gallons. These guys are pretty hardy and have been known to spawn successfully in the aquarium. They prefer to associate with members of its own species as tank mates, but they will gladly and happily live in a peaceful community tank as well. You do absolutely 100% need a lid if you decide to add this guy or any type of tile fish to your aquarium. They will absolutely jump out of your tank. They are very, very flighty. So definitely please get a lid if you decide to add a tile fish or this blue face tile fish to your tank. All right, so this is the Volatin Lionfish. This guy, I wanna start out by saying, is venomous. On the end of all of his fins, he has little spines that will produce venom. So be very, very careful when working in your tank if you decide to add one of these to your aquarium. Now they do best kept singly, but will quickly become the centerpiece of your aquarium. If you do want to add more than one, make sure you have a very large aquarium so that these guys will be able to hide out and have their own territories in their own space. Um, they do need a tank with plenty of rock work so that they can retreat, but they also need plenty of free, sw uh, free space to swim so that they can really stretch out their fins as well. These guys are definitely a carnivore and most of the time they will only eat live food such as guppies and ghost shrimp, but with some patience, some can be transitioned over to frozen food. All right guys, this fish I'm super excited about. It's the purple eyebrow tusk fish. So tusk fish are actually a type of ras. Um, some of you might not know the harlequin tusk, very popular, they are also a ras. Um, these guys were discovered in 1907, but there's not a whole lot of information about them. So unfortunately I don't have a whole lot, but I absolutely wanted to show him in the video because this is a stellar fish. I'm very excited to get him in. These guys are usually caught on deep fishing lines, but they are very rarely seen by divers. Um, they are usually found um, solitary, so usually only one although they do have very distinct pairing for breeding. The diet on this guy is going to be fairly similar to the harlequin tusk, large meaty pieces of food. Um, so yeah, that's about all I have. I'm going to try to do more research for you guys, but like I said, there isn't a whole lot, but I absolutely wanted to show him because this guy is super cool. So this is the Heniochus butterfly, also known as the banner fish. I might have really murdered that pronunciation. Um, Sir Richard will let me know <laughs> if I pronounced it correctly or not. Um, this is a very, very peaceful fish and is one of the more quote unquote hardy butterflies if there is such a thing as a hardy butterfly. These guys are an omnivore so they eat meaty foods as well as herbivore preparations as well. They grow to be around eight and a half inches so they will need a little bit larger of an aquarium to call home. They are not reef compatible or reef safe like all butterflies because they do enjoy munching on your coral. The long spine squirrel fish. I don't get squirrel fish very often. Um, you can tell it's a squirrel fish because they have very distinct large eyes. Now this is a very beautiful brightly colored species of squirrel fish. Very popular, very colorful. They live in groups of about eight to 10 in the wild, but in the aquarium they do best being kept singly is they will become territorial over their crevices and spaces in the rock. They are benthic feeders, which is one of the reasons that they have the adaptation of the large eyes so that they can let in as much light as possible to be able to see and then catch their prey. They mostly feed on zoobenthos, which are bottom living creatures such as crustaceans found on the seafloor. But in the aquarium, these guys can be transitioned over onto shrimp such as mysis or brine. All right, if this animal right here looks very familiar to you, it should. So I got in a baby test this week. So this is a juvenile version of a tessellata or honeycomb moray eel, just like our very large star pet test. Now these guys are major carnivores who are aggressive and predatory. So be very careful which tank you decide to add them to. They can be classified as reef safe with caution because they will not eat your coral, but they will feed on smaller fish, cleanup crew, and some cephalopods as well. Their diet should consist and include of larger pieces of meat, scallops, squid, octopus, fish, etc. 
They are one of the larger moray eels growing to around five feet in length. So they do need a fairly large aquarium with a tight fitting lid so that they don't escape and so that they'll have plenty of free swimming room. They also enjoy having a rockscape that has holes and crevices so that they can curl up in those holes and hide like they would in the wild. This is the Swiss Guard Basslet. Um, it's the first time I've been able to get one in the store. I'm sure we've had one here before. Um, they are super, super cool. Um, they reach a maximum size of about three inches. So these guys are perfect for even smaller aquariums, just like the BioCube. They are yellow orange with five black stripes running horizontally down their bodies. And each black stripe is bordered by red on the top and the bottom. The second dorsal fin and the anal fin have a distinct black dot on them as well. They are a carnivore who will eat small pieces of meat as well as some crustaceans. And this species does do best as the only one of the species in an aquarium. So this guy right here is the pink spot watchman. And let me tell you what, his spots are like bright, bright pink. Um, this is the first time I've actually ever seen one of these in person and it is beautiful. Her spots, like I said, are really, really bright pink. Um, she is very peaceful and very reef compatible as well. They're carnivores, so she'll eat things like mysa shrimp and brine shrimp. They're only going to get about four inches, so she can pretty much go in any size tank that you have. I would recommend you have a lid for this guy as well if you decide to try a pink spot watchman as gobies in general are skate artists and she will not be aggressive toward any other fish in the aquarium except others of the same species. The only way you could keep two of these guys successfully together in a tank is if they're a mated pair, but definitely worth trying the pink spot watchman. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to the saltwater update this week. Um, as always, please make sure that you follow us on all social media uh, channels such as Facebook, follow us on um, our Instagram, as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, again, Chuck always says that's just a little bit of the fish we got in. We got in a whole lot more. Please come check them out. So I'll see you guys soon. Um, have a great week and we'll see you here at Fishy Business.